okay, you're going to translate for me. You know, I don't know what you're going to do. Do you have a paper for her, or she should read for my paper? Uh, she can watch off the screen. Oh, you can watch off the screen. Can you read off the screen? If read off the screen? Okay, everything's going to be on the screen. Good. So you gotta sing loud too. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's something I don't really know how to translate? They hit. Fool all of us. Two people here, and you're not going to See. I'm not sure just how all we're going to do that. But let us make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that means what we do here is all by God's power. And he does it. We're going to ask you to come forward, please. Yeah. Jessica, bring your family up to the front, please, so we can thank you. We, we want to be together. That's very nice. Apostle Paul very much wanted to visit Rome so that he could meet with his fellow Christians to explain to them a great many things that were often not understood about the gospel. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make the journey just then, but Paul knew just how important these truths were. So he wrote a very long letter to the churches in Rome to help them live their lives each day following Christ, understanding the depths of his love and the blessings they have received through his sacrifice. Part of Paul's letter was meant to encourage these new Christians as following Christ was not always easy for them. He wrote, if God is for us, who can be against us? Paul's letter explained that every day was a new opportunity for them to exercise
place their faith in God. In Rome, as well as any other city on earth, people often provided for themselves through dishonest and dishonorable ways, ways in which a Christian should not act. Paul reminded the Romans that God was their provider when he wrote, If God didn't even spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, why should we worry that he wouldn't gladly give us everything we need? Paul knew that following Jesus often meant not following what was considered normal at the time, and it could cause trouble for the Roman Christians. Doing what is right can often make people say that what they are doing is wrong. This new knowledge isn't always met with acceptance and repentance. Some people may become angry and accuse them of wrongdoing, but Paul reminded them that they were washed clean of their sins and justified in God's eyes. Paul wrote, Who can bring any charge against those whom God has chosen and justified? If God doesn't condemn us, then no one can. Paul continued encouraging the Roman Christians, reminding them that Jesus' sacrifice had repaired their relationship with God. So, no matter what happened in their lives, nothing would take that away from Christ Jesus, who not only died, but also was raised to life, is sitting at the right hand of God, acting on our behalf. When we know that to be true, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Continuing his questions about what can separate Christians from the love of Christ, Paul listed a number of scary things that people can encounter such as hard times, mean people, threats of danger, violence, and lack of food and clothing. Could those scary things separate Christians from the love of Christ? What about being seen as weak and helpless, like sheep that are going to be killed? Could that separate them from the love of Christ? No. Paul wrote, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus. Us. And because Christ's followers cannot be separated from them, they don't need to live in fear of any of those scary things happening to them, because He is always with them. Paul's encouragement continued when he wrote, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heart nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. While Paul's letter was written to the people in Rome a long time ago, Jesus' love for us is the same. He is stronger than anything that life can throw at us, and He 
amor y afecto, el apóstol Pablo escribió a la iglesia joven de Roma, a aquellos que son amados por Dios y llamados a ser suyos, estoy ansioso por contarles las buenas nuevas de su Mesías. En esta carta, Pablo revelaría cosas sobre Dios que solo podrían ser comprendidas mediante la vida, muerte y resurrección de Jesús. Pablo dijo, no me avergüenza el Evangelio de Cristo, porque es el poder de Dios el que salva a todo aquel que cree. Pablo les recordó a los romanos que hace mucho tiempo había sucedido algo terrible. El pecado entró en nuestro mundo perfecto. Todo comenzó cuando Adán y Eva desobedecieron a Dios, trayendo una oscura maldición sobre todo lo que Dios había creado. La relación especial que Dios tenía con su creación se rompió. Desde ese momento de la historia, la maldición del pecado pasó de persona a persona, afectando a todos los hombres, mujeres y niños. Después de la caída, la gente nacía esclava del pecado. Pablo escribió, todos pecaron y fueron destituidos de la gloria de Dios. El pecado acabó con todo, incluyendo la amistad con Dios. La gente ya no confiaba en Dios se rebelaron contra él y se perdieron sin esperanza en la oscuridad del pecado. La paz y la felicidad fueron reemplazadas por el miedo y la preocupación. Y había una buena razón para preocuparse. La maldición del pecado ponía constantemente a personas sanas en riesgo de enfermedad, pero lo peor de todo, el pecado causaba la muerte por doquier y los separaba de la bondad y la gloria de Dios para siempre. Sobre esta horrible verdad, Pablo escribió, el pago por el pecado es la muerte. Pero desde el comienzo de los tiempos, incluso antes de la creación del mundo, los pensamientos amorosos de Dios iban dirigidos a su creación perdida y Él tenía un plan para recuperarla. Ya que la muerte era el único pago por el pecado, Dios enviaría a su Hijo Jesús para tomar el lugar de los perdidos que estaban enfermos de pecado. Jesús mostró el acto de amor y amistad más increíbles mediante su muerte hacia los que habían desobedecido a Dios. Pablo escribió, la mayoría de la gente no moriría por una persona honrada, aunque algunos estarían dispuestos a morir por una persona que hace muchas cosas buenas. Pero Dios demostró su amor por nosotros mientras aún éramos pecadores mediante la muerte de Cristo por nosotros. Dios vino a salvarnos tal y como había prometido. La muerte de Jesús preparó el camino para que la gente fuera perdonada y para que cada pecado fuera enviado lejos y olvidado para siempre. No hay otro poder en el cielo ni la tierra que pueda salvar a la gente del pecado y la muerte. Por el nombre de Jesús, toda la gente puede ser salvada. Dios rescatará a cualquiera que lo llame y le pida ayuda. Pablo escribió, cualquiera que invoque el nombre del Señor será salvado. Cuando la gente llega a creer que Dios resucitó a Jesús de entre los muertos, todo cambia. Mediante la fe, ellos reconocerán a Jesús como su Señor y le pedirán que guíe sus vidas. Los creyentes entienden el gran precio que pagó Jesús por sus pecados y humildemente entregarán sus vidas a Dios. Esta es una gran decisión y que puede ser muy difícil. Seguir a Jesús significa apartarse del pecado y del egoísmo y confiar en Dios en cada parte de su vida. Pablo escribió, si reconoces a Jesús como el Señor y crees de corazón que Dios lo resucitó de entre los muertos, serás salvado. 
El pecado enoja a Dios porque daña y destruye la creación que Él ama. Por eso, Dios ha prometido castigar el pecado. Los creyentes no necesitan temer a Dios porque son perdonados. Dios ve a aquellos que creen en Jesús como sus propios hijos, y a sus ojos, sus hijos son honrados y perfectos. Las buenas nuevas de Jesús es que el precio por los pecados ya ha sido pagado, y el regalo de la salvación pertenece a los hijos de Dios. Pablo escribió, Ahora ya no hay castigo para los que están en Jesucristo, sino que se les ha dado el espíritu de hijos adoptados, de modo que ahora le gritan, Padre. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord, and you forgave all the guilt of my sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore, 
forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Creo en Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, Creador del cielo y de la tierra, y en Jesucristo, su único Hijo, nuestro Señor, que fue concebido por obra del Espíritu Santo. Nació de la Virgen María, nació bajo el poder de Poncio Pilatos, fue crucificado, muerto y sepultado, descendió a los infiernos, al tercer día resucitó de entre los muertos, subió a los cielos, está sentado a la diestra de Dios, Padre Todopoderoso. Y desde allí ha de venir a juzgar a los vivos y a los muertos. Creo en el Espíritu Santo, la Santa Iglesia Cristiana, la comunión de los santos, perdón los pecados y la resurrección de la carne, la vida perdonable. Amén. We have the reading of the gospel lesson for today. But where it is from, uh, Luke chapter 21. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its destruction is near. Let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And the earth 
and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cuando vierais a Jerusalén rodeada de ejércitos, saber entonces que su destrucción ha llegado. Entonces los que estén en Judea huyan a los montes, y los que en medio de ella váyanse, y los que estén en los campos no entren en ella, porque estos son días de retribución para que se cumplan todas las cosas que están escritas. Mas hay de las que estén en cintas y de las que críen en aquellos días, porque habrá gran calamidad en la tierra e ira sobre este pueblo, y caerán a filo de espada y serán llevados cautivos a todas las naciones, y Jerusalén será hollada por los gentiles hasta que los tiempos de los gentiles se cumplan. Entonces habrá señales en el sol, en la luna y en las estrellas, y en la tierra angustia de las gentes confundidas a causa del bramido del mar y de las olas desfalleciendo los hombres por el temor y la expectación de las cosas que sobrevendrán en la tierra, porque las potencias de los cielos serán conmovidas. Entonces verán al Hijo del Hombre, que vendrá en una nube con poder y gran gloria. Cuando estas cosas comiencen a suceder, erguíos y levantad vuestra cabeza, porque vuestra redención está cerca. Esta es la palabra del Señor.
My turn. Your turn. <laughs> the lesson today can be kind of scary for most people. It's kind of like I told the story this morning. When I went to school, I was not the best of students. Now I tell my grandchildren and my great grandchild if she should get that old that they should study very hard and be good students. Even my wife became a teacher and was trying to help students. But when I was a boy, a student, to go to school was more like going to jail. It was a place to get out of. I was not looking to learn anything. I was only trying to get free to go and play and do what boys do. But when it came time for the report card, you know what, do you get report cards today? You know what that is, yeah. Then I had to walk to my house. It was about one mile from the school. You know, that was a very hard walk for me. 
because my grades were so bad. I knew I was in trouble when I looked at the grades and when I knew I was getting poor, poor grades anyway. And when I got to the house, do you think my mother was very happy with me? Oh, no. She fixed me. She, she tried to straighten me out, you know. Only with her, she worked on the back side of me. Well, some of you maybe, I don't know if you mothers would do that, but anyway, she said, you have to learn to study. You have to be serious. After she did that, and I was thinking, hmm, then I went back to school and I tried a bit harder. And the next time I had the report card, guess what? I had A's and B's, that means very good scores. I don't know, do you still use A's and B's in school? Maybe not, you do, okay. But that was pretty good for me because I wasn't seeing many of those before. You know that one mile, I think I ran the whole way to get to the house because my mother and father were there and I wanted them to see that. And they said, very good, boy. you're doing good. That made me feel very nice. Jesus is coming, and you know, many people are afraid to meet Jesus because they feel they, they, Jesus is going to maybe be angry at them, or it won't be nice for them when Jesus comes. But that's why Jesus, he paid the price for us, didn't he? And he, he loves us so much that Jesus says, I will come and stay in your heart, and I will change your heart so that you can love and you can take care, look after one another, be kind to one another, be happy with one another. And oh, it is so nice. So now, when Jesus comes, we can say, yes, we lift up our head, yes, Jesus, come, I'm happy for you to take me home, because in heaven everything is fine. Now something I don't get a chance to do much anymore, but I have two songs that I love very much, and some of you might remember when you were little girls or little boys, when I would teach these songs and sing these songs. You remember the songs, the ho, ho, ho songs? Some of you remember that? Okay, I love that because these are laughing songs. And this is, I sing this because Jesus is my heart, makes me so joyful. And I want to serve him and I want to share that joy. Do you remember it enough to sing it with me? Okay, let's try that. We will sing that. And that will be my message for today. Okay, remember this. Big bon toss, right? Big guy, like that. Oh, 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 Santa, ha, hallelujah. He, 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 he saves me. We have the joy of the Lord. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, my soul, my mind. Love my neighbor as myself. We have the joy of the Lord again now. Ho, 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 Zahanna. Ah, ah, hallelujah. He, 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 he saves me. We have the joy of the Lord. We are the salt of the earth, a city perched upon a hill. We are the light of the world. We have the joy of the Lord. Again now. Ho, 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 Zahanna. Ah, 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 hallelujah. He, 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 he saves me. We have the joy of the Lord. Wonderful, you did very well. Good. Now let's see what we do from here. 
All things begin to uh, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nigh. Yes, we look forward to Jesus coming. Okay. I don't think, are we taking an offering today? Do we do that? It's in the back. Okay, if there's an offering, it's in the back. And so we move along to prayers. We have a video first. Thank you. prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Padre Nostro. Padre Nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nos tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos a nos cada media, danos hoy, y perdónanos nuestras deudas así como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos dejes caer en la tentación, más líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el poder, el reino y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please come forward for the Holy Communion. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, serving in his own spirit to obtain all joy and to make everlasting. We have in peace. Amen.
It's still not working. Oh, it's because I was like, oh, like, I feel bad for not, but I just, it won't work. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, we have a video. Thank you. 